Is this a cake or a giant Silvana? Nope. Here I'm paying homage to the YouTube steak god, Guga. I'm taking his recipe for butter aging steak at home. I was surprised to hear you can do it even for single cut steaks. Can we get a better steak by butter aging this one piece? Let's find out. Hey everyone, so today I wanted to do something different. I wanted to cook for you guys. I wanted to see if we could enhance the flavor of your steak through the butter aging process. Now this is usually done for slabs of meat like you would for the dry aging process where you set the slab in a controlled environment similar to that of the curing process. Now people have done this at home through the butter aging process and I've recently come across that you could do it also for just a single piece of steak. I came across this through the Google Foods YouTube channel, which I'm a really big fan of. I think, by the way, Guga is a steak god. And if you're watching this, Guga, I hope I don't bastardize your recipe. So can we really enhance the flavor of one piece of steak through the butter aging process? Let's see. To start off, prepare a clean area where you'll be putting together the butter base. Here, we're using baking paper. This is where you'll start forming the base of your butter coating. Make sure that you have a lot of butter in stock and have it melt in room temperature until it gets to a fairly spreadable state. Estimating the size of your steak, apply a liberal amount to establish your base, enough to cover it. Once you've established the base, get your steak out and pat dry. The steak should have been thawing close to room temperature. The less juices surfacing at this stage, the better. Now cover the entire steak with butter. Be generous with your application of the butter to make sure that you're coating the steak well. I was surprised that this process took me a lot longer than expected, a little over 15 minutes. Once entirely covered, Place this in your refrigerator for the butter aging process. I'll be aging this one for 30 days. And as a disclaimer, the next part of the video will be showing a steak I previously butter aged at 16 days. As early as now, you already know that there will be a part 2 for this experiment and video. So here we go! It's good to see you, my friend. I've been waiting for you for a while. Taking out of the refrigerator, let's see how the steak is going. It's a bit concerning that there's some blood on the side. Guga said in one of his videos that when there's blood, it means that it wasn't properly encased, so that not might be a good thing. But anyway, I'm still excited. I'm still excited for steak. It's time to get this encased steak opened. The butter has formed a semi-hard, not really hard shell. You can see the knife easily sliding through. And at this point, you can actually just pry it open. You can see that it easily comes off. You can see the steak. It's a little wet, so pat it dry. Again, this is a first steak that I worked with for aging. This is an SNR steak, an Australian ribeye steak. It retails for about a thousand pesos for three pieces, so roughly this is a little over 300 pesos. I was surprised that it was kind of hard, really hard actually. I ended up aging it through this process. There are dark spots, which means oxidation. That's completely normal. You know, we said be generous with your seasoning. Putting some pepper on it. I always love a good coating of pepper on my steaks. Make sure that surface evenly covered, both sides of course, and now I'm placing it into this rack before I place it in the oven. You can see the discarded butter that I'm leaving there, which they say you should no longer use. The next step in how I cook my steak is through the reverse sear process. I use a convection oven 
or more commonly known in the Philippines as a turbo broiler. For a steak such as this, a little over 1 inch thick, I like to put it at 8 minutes and at the lowest possible temperature at around 125 degrees centigrade. While that's cooking for a little while, I like to use this time to prepare some garnishings and some flavorings, chopping up some garlic, preparing some rosemary, and preparing the butter that I'm going to use for frying. So getting our steaks out of the oven, it's almost ready. I'm excited. It doesn't look that great now. It's still a little moist and it's a little grayish, a little brown. I'm doing a finger test. You see that it's very tender. It doesn't have that bounce or that crust that we're looking for. And the sear on the next stage will actually address that. Here I'm using light olive oil and I make sure that the pan is well coated and well heated. And before I put the steak on, I make sure that the pan is in its highest temperature. When the pan is emitting smoke, that's when I put in the steak. I'm actually sharing this with you in full frying time. I'm going to show you that it doesn't take much, that cooking your steak after that time in the oven will actually be just a little under one minute on one side and another minute on the other. I'm going to leave you now to enjoy the sizzle that the steak is going to bring. I hope you don't get too hungry. As we round up the first minute of the frying process, I like to put in my rosemary only at this time so as not to overwhelm it and over fry it with the high heating process. At this stage, I like switching off the stove before I flip the steak. And then I put in the butter and the garlic for flavorings. And I let the steak cook in the last bit of sizzle and heat that the pan has at this time. It's just a one inch steak so I'm quite wary about overdoing it. That's why I turn off the heat and make sure that I'm not going to be overcooking it. I don't want a well done steak. As we finish up cooking this side of the steak, it's time to baste it with the butter and garlic that I just have put in. Aside from the flavor of the butter seeping through, this allows the steak to cook further with the heat that's been generated from the butter. Don't you find it amazing? What actually makes the meat better is the fat that's derived from the milk of the same animal. It's like the cow coming together to make this perfect dish. Once the steak is out of the stove, it needs another 10 minutes to relax and let the juices flow. While waiting, I like to fry some rice and have all those juices soaked up. Hello there my pretty one. Now it's time to see if we did it some justice, if we've actually cooked it a perfect medium to medium rare. Oh, it's looking good. A little reddish pink. Just having some trouble with this crystal over here. Let's try to get through. Let's try to slice through it. Ah. But aside from that one little gristle, everything looks pretty tender. So now we're going to be tasting Dugas Butter Age Single Steak. So I have to admit, I gave away some of the steak already to my family members, but I told them that I needed to shoot. So I'm gonna eat this with you guys here so that you can see if butter aging your steak for 16 days is worthwhile. Okay, well, let's get a good piece. Hmm. 
It's definitely tender. Something surprising about the taste. Let me let me just go taste one more. I can't quite put my finger to it, but there's this slightly unpleasant sour aftertaste. I'm trying to see what might have happened. Uh, I can liken the sourness to the time that I, I mixed uh, small amounts in the butter. There's a little bit of time and it's giving sort of a, a slightly citrus taste. But I'm not sure I, I totally like it. Cheers guys! The ribeye is definitely more tender, but as for taste, I'm not finding that taste that they would say about aging that's a little moldy. Um, they say if it's really old, it can taste a little like blue cheese. This tastes quite normal except that I don't like how it went off key. I'm not sure if it was a factor of our refrigerator. Maybe the temperature wasn't as controlled as it should have been. Of course, it's, it's being used here by a family. It's sometimes left open by a little bit. And like I told you earlier, there was a little blood that was spilling um, out of the butter encasing, so I don't know. Maybe I didn't encase it properly, and maybe the, the temperature had a factor, and also maybe it did not age properly. What I can definitely take away is the tenderizing process. As you saw earlier, there was some gristle already when I was trying to slice into it, so... Right now guys, I can't fully recommend this, but I would still like to try. I would like to extend the number of days that I'm going to be aging it. This one was supposed to age at 14 days. I got a little busy. It went to 16 days, which I thought might do it well. But I still have some steaks here. I know what I already have in mind, and I'm going to be aging that. And I'm going to push for 30 days, if not even longer. That's what I'm going to be trying. So. Right now, I cannot yet recommend the butter aging process for single steaks, but if you have a more controlled environment and you have steaks that you would like to improve, that you would like to enhance, I encourage you to try it. Cheers guys!